Hi, I'm Sheriff Gary Hoffman. I want to welcome you to this week's Queen Anne's County's Most Wanted. What an exciting time to bring you 2012's Best Queen Anne's County's Most Wanted. We're going to be asking you to contribute to some of our newest captures for 2012. We depend on you, the community, for your tips, your information, and those phone calls that are going to lead us to Queen Anne's County's Most Wanted. Your police department serves you every day in a different way. The police are mighty handy in these circumstances. The life savings of many persons are still intact because of expert protection by their police. As we've brought 2011 to a close, we're looking forward to the beginning of 2012. But we first couldn't do that beginning without the special thanks of everyone involved in making Queen Anne's County's Most Wanted one of the most successful capture shows out there. It even caught the national attention of John Walsh from America's Most Wanted. Join my friends in law enforcement to take those fugitives off the streets. I promise you, you can remain anonymous. And don't forget, you can make a difference. We've had so much success locating fugitives and closing cases. But all of that couldn't have been done without the help from you, the viewers, and the support of the commissioners and Queen Anne's County government. Thanks to Christy Condi and Dale Patrick for bringing and reviewing all the information for these cases. Special thanks to Ted McNeil and the staff of QAC-TV. Without their help, this show wouldn't be possible. I want to especially thank Stephanie Jones, who works in our office. She is our social media buff. And for those of you who followed us in the cases like the Grimes case, or other cases even involving storms, hurricanes, things like that. Stephanie Jones is one of the ones who can get that media stuff out there to all of you who follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Special thanks goes out to every one of you, the viewers. All the viewers who have made Queen Anne's County TV, Queen Anne's County's Most Wanted, so successful in all the captures and everything that we've done. I hope everybody had a great holiday. I hope everybody had a great close to 2011. And I look forward to bringing you some of the greatest cases for 2012. One of the crimes we need help with, on March 2nd, 2011, in Chester at the Exxon Station, law enforcement was summoned to the call for a possible disturbance in the parking lot near the gas pumps. Upon arrival, deputies met Glenn Murphy. Glenn Murphy was asked to give a ride to Crystal Evans to Baltimore for an unknown reason. At that time, Crystal Evans became enraged. She grabbed the keys she said for him to get out of the vehicle, and she also said that if he didn't get out, she was going to kill him and also firebomb his house. At that time, Crystal Evans fled in the car before law enforcement arrived. Several minutes later, Crystal Evans was stopped on Maryland U.S. Route 50 in the area of Baydale Drive by the Maryland State Police. A lookout had not been put into the computer as of yet as law enforcement officers on the scene were gathering their critical information. Maryland State Police at that time let Miss Evans go, which was great information to us in law enforcement that we knew she was the operator of that motor vehicle. On March 14, 2011, the car was located on McHenry Street in Baltimore, Maryland. The car was a leased vehicle that had belonged and had been leased to Evans. At this time, law enforcement did confirm and verify that Glenn Murphy had leased the vehicle and it was belonging to him. When this car was located on McHenry Street in Baltimore, Confirmation was is that Crystal Evans did make it to Baltimore. Crystal Evans was charged with carjacking, theft, and an assault charge, as well as unauthorized use of a motor vehicle. Crystal Evans has been charged. She's a 29-year-old white female with brown hair and hazel eyes. She is 5 foot 8 inches tall and weighs about 200 pounds. She has family in the Baltimore area and could also be in Cumberland County, Pennsylvania. If you've seen Crystal Evans, please contact our office as soon as possible. In May of 2010, deputies were dispatched to a residence in the area of Brownsville Road in Centerville, Maryland. At that time, they discovered a naked white male, John Barnes, running around the outside of the residence. At that time, deputies had to pepper spray Mr. Barnes to subdue him to determine what had just occurred at that residence. As Barnes was located outside of the residence, deputies entered the residence. At that time, they discovered a 71-year-old female, apparently who had been assaulted, smothered with a blanket, and when she attempted to contact 911, 
The phone had been thrown out of an outside window. Barnes did attend trial. He was ordered to attend a drug treatment program at Second Genesis, as well as five years of probation. Apparently, when he attended the Second Genesis treatment program, he decided to get up and walk away without completing his program. At this time, John Gilbert Barnes is a 31-year-old white male. He's approximately six foot, two inches tall, and weighs about 280 pounds with brown hair and blue eyes. He has a very distinguishable tattoo on his left shoulder of a fairy sitting on mushrooms. He can be considered dangerous, especially when he's under the influence of drugs. If you've seen John Gilbert Barnes, please contact our office as soon as possible. Hey, Lieutenant, while we were filming a few minutes ago, they uh, gave us information on that paving guy that was wanted. Anything on that? Uh, yes, uh, he was just picked up this weekend down in Florida, Osceola County, down in Kissimmee, Florida. He's being held on Maryland detainers from both Queen Anne's County and Anne Arundel County. It looks like uh, the state's attorneys have talked and they will be extraditing him back to Maryland at some point. Great. This is another guy that we took off the streets that won't be scamming our seniors and hopefully he can take his paving jobs to the detention center. Hi, I'm here in the office of the Criminal Investigations Unit here at the Office of the Sheriff. They need your help with a case. On October 17, 2011, thieves entered the parking lot of Lowe's Automotive in Stevensville, Maryland. At this time, they weren't out just looking for a classic car. They were out looking for a special classic car. They were actually looking for a yellow Cadillac. At that time, thieves actually in the middle of the night backed this yellow Cadillac, a 1967 convertible, off the display rack, which was right along the side of the US Route 50, and the ramp, and actually put this into a tractor trailer truck. After reviewing the video footage from several security cameras in the area, we know that two persons took the car. The car was taken over near the Hardee's and then loaded onto a tractor trailer with a multi-car trailer. This Cadillac is not easy to hide. It's over 22 feet long, weighs approximately 4,500 pounds, and was painted yellow and has a black interior. There are only 18,200 of these cars built this year in 1967. So it's not a common car on the road, and this one only had 40,000 miles on the odometer. If you've happened to have seen this yellow Cadillac at any of the car shows or anywhere out there, please contact the Office of the Sheriff, the Criminal Investigations Unit, as the owner of this vehicle has offered a finder's fee for this car. Let's do our best to get this 1967 Cadillac back on the lot at Lowe's Automotive in Stevensville. As anybody knows, if you're a victim of a crime, it's an extremely traumatic experience. It's one of those things that we hope nobody ever has to go through. On November 6, 2011, in Barclay, Maryland, a 64-year-old female was at home watching TV as she lay on the couch. At that time, two men forced their way into the home through a door. Those two men were wearing masks, told her to remain on the sofa, disabled the phones in the house, and then forced the 64-year-old female into a closet. The two men that were masked stole cash, jewelry, and actually took her TV. A check of the area after this home invasion revealed that a three-year-old child saw one scary person looking into their house and then told their grandparents. The two suspects fled the area. About an hour later, a similar home invasion occurred near Hartley, Delaware, about 15 miles away. This time, two suspects entered the house of a 76-year-old female. They displayed a gun and demanded cash. Investigators from the Sheriff's Office and Delaware State Police are working together on these two cases. The two suspects are described as possibly African-American males or of mixed race descent. One was described as having extremely bad body odor. The Office of the Sheriff, as well as Delaware State Police, are looking for your help in solving these home invasion crimes. If you have any information, any thoughts, any suspects, or anything you think might be pertinent to the case, it's so important you contact Detective Goodman here at Queen Anne's County Office of the Sheriff. If you have any information about these wanted people or unsolved cases, please contact the Queen Anne's County Sheriff's Office at 410-758-0770 or email us at sheriffinfo at qac.org. We also recommend you follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter.
With the tips we get from the viewers, we're hoping that some of the Queen Anne's County's most wanted get to experience this.